We don't always follow convention. Because the future of banking is not just about numbers. At CIMB, people come first. It's where differences are celebrated. A place where individual passions become assets that shape the way forward. Your strengths and our experience will make you the leader you envision to be. Go beyond boundaries and reach your full potential. For the game changers, disruptors, the digital daredevils, we're calling out to you. Just as the future calls out for the next generation. Start a career revolution. Together, we'll go further. With your talent, unleashed by our vision. We're future ready.
to those of you who have come in search of answers. Seeking inspiration and looking to achieve your aspiration. This is the place where you will learn to find the answers. Where you will be motivated to discover your inspiration. Where you will be propelled to realize your aspirations. With today's global challenges, the role of the engineer, the scientist and the technologist is transformed from being the technical innovator into being the agent of global change. Our world-class resources and faculties, our cutting-edge facilities, our global partnerships with leading universities, our strong network with industry for internships and job placements. Our worldwide research collaboration. These are the inspirations and the opportunities at UTP. Here, we nurture the analytical skills and intellectual capabilities of all who walk the UTP path. Here we culture the ethics and the attitudes that will shine in the real world. Here we expose ourselves to what it truly means to be human, to be a valuable part of society to be the empowered people, the game changers, who will light up the path towards a better world and change lives for the better. At UTP, the torch is firmly in your hands. So hold it up high and let us together light it and let it burn bright. Join us to seek inspiration and achieve your aspiration towards global prominence. Okay. All right. Good afternoon uh, and welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Chan from JA Systems in Denver Hut. I'm your new moderator for today's podcast talk. As you all know, um, Voices of Malaysia Today uh, with Malaysia, uh, Malaysia Research and Education Foundation have been running a series of podcast talks. Uh, running up to our virtual event called Research and Education Insight 2021, or in short, uh, Ready 2021, happening next month on 11 and 12 January. Uh, this podcast talks concentrate mainly from industry's points of view. So today we will be looking into the technology and engineering related industry. So uh, before we go into our talk, a friendly reminder. Uh, to take part in all the Pocket Talks and the virtual event, do remember to, rege to register by logging in to MyRef's website, uh, which is www.myref.org.my or uh, www.voices.my. Right? These Pocket Talks and the virtual events are free and open to all. Yeah? 
especially for students and working professionals. Since uh, it is free for all, as uh, free to all, we are happy and to uh, uh, happy to welcome any contributions and sponsorship, lah. Huh? Um, just to uh, just log into MyRef website uh, again www.myref.org.my or Voices Malaysia at Voices.my for more details. All right. Um, as mentioned, we are covering the technology and engineering related industry uh, and today we have two wonderful speakers uh, who will give you an insight into these industries. It's a great pleasure, a, a pleasure to, to introduce our speakers for today. Uh, first of all, uh, we have Puan Soliha Rosli. Uh, she's currently the GM for EDS Asia Sedia uh, for the For your info, uh, EDS Asia is a leading computer software and engineering support and training company in Southeast Asia region. Yeah, EDS Asia status as a representative of major brands such as uh, Roth R2, PipeNet, HDRI, a uh, testament to the company's strength in various uh, sectors and industries, including oil and gas, energy, building constructions, mechanical design, uh, as well as uh, engineering consultancy and more. All right. As of uh, Paul Soliha, what she does within EDS is providing technical support, uh, project assistance, management, uh, and application training to clients in Southeast Asia region. As part of her job, she does uh, travel extensively to meet clients and address their issues face to face. And also, together with us today, uh, we are honored to have Professor TS Dr. Muhammad Ibrahim Mutalib. Vice Chancellor of University Technology Protonas, or in short, UTP. Uh, professor has had a, a long and illustrious career. Uh, as an active researcher, he has published over 150 journals paper and has won numerous awards, including the best green inventions at ITEX 2015. Back at, at, uh, back at UTP, uh, he played a key role in developments and implementations of the R&D and consultancy master plan for UTP. He, has, uh, he was also instrumental in developing UTP's roadmap into being a globally recognized research university. Yeah, okay, so here we are today, um, two uh, well-known uh, speakers. Good afternoon to both of you, Puan and Professor. How are you doing today? Good afternoon. I'm doing well. Good afternoon, David. Great. Fine, Great. thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Today is Friday. Everybody looking for Friday and weekend <laughs> is just around the corner. So I hope, uh, well, today we have a, a, you know, sort of a talks uh, to uh, to make sure that, you know, we give some insights on, on your experience and and the career to students and those working uh, professionals who are listening and viewing now. Yeah. So uh, thank you again for making your time uh, to be here with us and sharing this experience, this wonderful experience and uh, to, to everyone here. Um, before we go deep into our topic for today, uh, uh, I I just like to ask: uh, Has this pandemic affected you or changed the way you run uh, your business or UST as a whole? Uh, perhaps, uh, Puan Soliha, you like to start first. Okay, right. Uh, definitely, COVID has changed so many things. Um, like being in an analysis, uh, technical support. Uh, like us, the only way to to get the work done correctly, effectively, is by meeting client face to face. Um, in our field, uh, talking on the phone, yeah, probably you get half of it. But the only way, definitely, you have to go down, meet the client, understand their problems, see their drawings, um, get the simulations done, and try to troubleshoot what was wrong and compare with the actual drawing at the plants, whether it makes sense or not. So what, what happened is that uh, just before we had lockdown in March, uh, I just made my way back from our office in Jakarta. Mm -hmm. And at that time, of course, we did not think that we won't be back to our office for, for another uh, almost a year like this. So, you know what happened? I just leave my office like that with my coffee and my everything on my desk. And the moment lockdown is announced and I just realized that, oh my God, my plans, my coffee, my office. So definitely it's all rotten there. So it gives us, of course, um, on the personal part, some kind of stress, some kind of tension for many things left undone due to this unexpected thing. 
And of course, with client as well, we have like documents that was not being able to send to our office due to the lockdown, uh, the courier stopped the services and things like that. So everybody, of course, is struggling due to COVID. Then that comes on the hard part where when there's less demand of fuel, there's less demand activities, um, economic activities, there's less demand um, on the, not only fuel, but also the petrochemical byproducts. So petrochemical plants, some uh, reduce the output, the offshore platforms, definitely some who are not making money shut down. That left people like us less jobs. <laughs> yeah. So less job to do, less business, less revenue, then what next? Headache. <laughs> okay, <laughs> stress that's well, from yeah. my stress. So that's from my perspective. Sure, sure. How about you, Professor? Professor Ibrahim. Well, uh, David, I, I have to be frank. I mean, I believe the whole university in Malaysia was uh, sort of uh, caught standing. You, know? uh, you, you don't expect, initially we know that there was a pandemic, but we don't expect. Hopefully we were hoping that it can be contained within China. But apparently when it came and suddenly the, the, the government go into the decision of doing uh, a lockdown, uh, and the uh, university was asked to close in. I mean, we were only given something like, uh, I, I don't know, although we know it's coming, but I think the, the, the real uh, the real signal given to us was, I think, about two days. So even the students was in a hurry in trying to get back because they know we have to, to do a transition towards shifting the whole lot of our teaching and learning on online platform. Yeah. So the students are not allowed to do any experiments, cannot uh, cannot do any face-to-face -face, uh, uh, interaction. So it just happened like that. Now, handling the student to go back is one thing, but whoever are left behind, we have about something like 1,500. But I must thank the government because they gave assistance for us to manage the students uh, at the university. So in a way, it's not too bad. It doesn't sort of uh, poke into our pocket, you know, yeah. because otherwise you've got to find ways and means in terms of how to support the student. Correct. Correct. Now, in terms of shifting our teaching and learning towards online platform, uh, I, I, I can only thank God UTP at that point in time because about two years ago or so, we have been thinking about you know using this uh, uh, this this online platform as a backup to our face to face. So we sort of uh, able to roll in some, and then uh, also because we we sort of attach to Petrona, so we get into MS Team. So we have MS as as one platform. Uh, and when it happened, we quickly get into uh, uh, another platform, which we call Big Blue Button, uh, supplied by 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 uh, the the, uh, the consultant, uh, sorry, the, the the provider in Kuala Lumpur, and link up to Australia and New Zealand. So we brought the two in. But of course, when you start using that, there's a lot of so-called havoc because you've got thousands of students. Eh? Uh, trying to use that system yeah. and you've got to sort of um, do a proper sort of timetable. They are not used to use it. You know, some of them after they log in, they forgot to log out and that actually block the other people from. So we got to resolve the whole lot of this, um, this, uh, this, this haywire things. Eh? Uh, but, uh, but my DVC, I must, I must, um, uh, I must compliment my DVC here. He was a very tough guy. So he was able to sort of drive and get things done, yeah? although, although it was difficult, but uh, thank God we were able to sort of move along and and, and, and nothing about uh, two, three months or so, we were able to sort of stabilize, yeah? Yeah. So, that, so we were able to sort of still run the operation, uh, but of course it's, it's not so interesting, you know, because the university is supposed to have students, you know, yeah. they, they're supposed to have, uh, 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 you know, apart from studying, they're supposed to have good times doing a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of activities and 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 what I sympathize them most is be most is because things, quite a number of them were actually scheduled to go overseas to do training to do student exchange and that was suddenly cut like that mm -hmm. so I pity and sympathize that yeah, yeah. Uh, so that is a part and uh, some of the things that I can share yeah you know no, I mean this this year is really very unprecedented <clears throat> uh, to all of us and uh, you know I think 
to our lifetime. This is the very first time we experience this. And I must say that the government is doing very well, a very good job to manage it. Though is everybody, like I said, it's, it's, true, it's quite new and it's very unforeseen things and you can't really put, uh, plan ahead. So yeah, like you say, uh, like the professor said, it's true, you know, when you want to do something, you plan to go online, then a lot of students are not used to it, the, the lecturers are not used to it as well, you know, and you get a lot of uh, stress and kind of, uh, you know, a kind of uh, equipment system are not ready for that, you know, so the mentality is not there, there's no interaction, so there's, the, the, the whole thing is a bit different. And I and I, and I also agree with Pan and Soliha, yeah, because you don't see face-to-face, -face, it's also hard to do uh, communications and business and so on and so forth, yeah, so this is not our Asian culture, we, we like to see face-to-face, -face, right, yeah. to, you know, to have that kind of interactions, yeah. Yeah, great, but like I say, I hope this pandemic will getting better uh, soon, yeah. Um, in in you know uh with the changing trend now in the pandemic year i call it a pandemic year in 2020 yeah um even like google for example it just uh, google hq just just announced it basically um they may put their staff to uh, permanently work from home right okay uh we have <clears throat> go from home or come to office whenever it's necessary so do you does this affect uh, employer in hiring new staff or do you think this is this will be the future i mean we are doing this already online yeah but what do you think about working from home and and even learning from home you know will this be the future part of part and parcel of uh, our life and and a uh, uh, business as well as the education uh, professor perhaps you can say for yeah. oh. Okay, all right. Uh, David, I had the opportunity to actually uh, attend virtually a number of um, webinars, right, conducted by uh, some of the university to the extent the speakers were coming from Harvard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what they were they were saying is that yeah, even I I believe in the sense that uh, after this pandemic is over, uh, I think no, what most university will do is that. They will not go to the back to the status quo of doing a face to face, just face to face. Yeah. But I would imagine, and in fact, for UTP, I'm lining up my people so that we will go into something like a hybrid mode. Yeah. And I was made to understand that in actual fact, the ministry is also looking at when they give a license, they don't sort of specify a license for face to face only or a license for on. They just give the university a license, and it's up to the university to actually. Uh, run your program. Mm -hmm. So during this pandemic, what I noticed, uh, including UTP and, and most universities, we have implemented and actually experienced in, in, in running our program yeah, through various uh, means, especially on online. Yeah, uh, We have been talking to many uh, potential provider. Right? To a certain extent, people are talking about virtual experimentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, that that comes together with uh, 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 where you know you, you don't have to exactly invest expensively in terms of having an equipment. But David, I always believe that you know um, you cannot do everything just by virtue of virtual uh, virtual connection uh, because I think a lot of the universities also believe that uh, you know the, the the delivery that is done just by virtual right we are still far away from getting to the uh, to the technology level that will give the same feel yeah the same uh, look and feel by which you can deliver uh, uh, similar to what we deliver through sort of face to face yeah so you can use online to actually back up the delivery uh, so in a way try to get the students to learn to do self learning but there are certain Part, right? When you do a discussion, when you do a supervision, when you do an experimentation, you need to sort of uh, give that that, that, that that strong feel to the student, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, what it is all about. They need to sort of experience some of the equipment, if not all, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, uh, it's just a sort of a virtual, virtual kind of experience, which may not be good enough. Yeah. And, um, and, and in this most of the webinar, they were saying that a lot of the university have to sort of strategize and looking at yeah, uh, uh, how much they will look at in terms of uh, mixing between between these two in going forward. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are some university because they want to uh, offer their courses at lower price or so, they would go on full online. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, uh, 
the capability of students that you develop then will remain something uh, questionable eh, if you if you go straight online. Another thing, David, I was looking at, you cannot go fully online is because, you know, in university, in UTP, what, we, what we're doing is that we strongly believe, right, when we bring the student on board at the university, it's not just about the academic program, but it is also the environment that you created, the activity that the students go through, uh, the, the kind of environment, uh, the opportunity of, uh, of, of doing exchange overseas, you know, the whole lot of this will have to develop the so-called soft part of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the academic program yeah. will develop the technical part, but the soft part is, is a lot more important in the sense that there were already comments uh, and, and critiques made by the industry saying that this is the part where university need to pay a lot more attention. Because at the end of the day, they're looking at students uh, or graduates walking out of the university, not just simply good in the technical, which now they have no problem with it, but also able to do good articulations of their thoughts, a good business plan, a practical, you know, uh, entrepreneurial to, the, to a certain extent. So these are the things that I believe you cannot provide it through a virtual experience. You got to bring them and 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 have and have that interaction uh, in the university. So that is uh, that is my, my my opinion, David. Yeah, totally agree. I think. So the same maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, I kind of have the same opinion with you, Prof, because it got to be hybrid. The reason is because we have to deal with projects and our projects, we have drawings to look at and there are many drawings to look at and it's very, very difficult when when we were in, in, in this COVID, COVID time. Um, all meetings, all projects need to be done from home and you might have your drawings here and there scattered and things like that. And the, the scary part is that when everything is being done online, you might not be referring to the correct parts in the drawings. So we face that. But anyway, on on the other hand, we also learn um, that when we thought that those meetings were not uh, possible through online, uh, because we are forced to, to do it online during the COVID time, we end up uh, realizing that, okay, so there's still something that can be done. I just want to share with you what happened some, during this COVID time. So we were doing some projects with MINC that time. So of course, the deliverables need, need to be sent. It got to be still on time, regardless of the con uh, condition of the pandemic and things like that. So we pull everyone together in a meeting. Uh, but we realized that the focus is not really there because being at home with the kids crying, with the distractions and things like that. And then um, we thought that, okay, once a week kind of meeting would be good. But once a week, you already lost like four days of focus. So we get everyone to meet on Monday, uh, Wednesday and Friday <laughs> via uh, Microsoft team meetings um, to make sure that every, everyone is keep on motivated and keep on uh, focusing on the project. Yeah. But um, I think David was asking about hiring new people and things like that just now. Yes. Uh, will this pandemic affect our hiring? Yes, def definitely. It do affects because one thing, like I mentioned just now, due to the shrinking of market, due to shrinking of business, we have less business. So we can't be hiring so many people right now. Um, we only can maintain who, whoever are here. But if virtual meetings and virtual way of working will work from home will be a future for, for our uh, particular industry, uh, specifically our kind of company, I don't think so. Uh, the reason is because uh, in order for us to make sure that the engineering analysis, the engineering drawing are being referred properly, uh, the codes and standards are being referred properly, um, you still need a face-to-face -face kind of mentoring, face-to-face -face kind of discussion. And in order to make sure that your, your project is done properly, um, I would say 20% of virtual or working from home is still okay but I still want 80% of physical presence in the office. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. I, yeah I, I guess the hybrid is the, is, is the way for future now. Uh, but one thing for sure, this pandemic has... has... David, I think you're on mute. Oh, am I? Am I on now? Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yeah, you cannot hear us. Uh, can I hear Maybe? you? Maybe, or the line is not good. Can I? Okay, can anyway, you... while David catches back, 
<laughs> probably I can share um, like um, huh? whether is there any still hopes, is there any still openings? Because Prof, you definitely want to know uh, your students who graduated during this pandemic year, would there be any opportunity for them to land, to land a job, isn't it? Okay, in my opinion, everybody keep on saying that, oh, market and after all, market is bad. Betul, market is bad. But don't lose hope because, um, yes, new development might be put on shelf at the moment. New platforms uh, might wait for some times when the demand gets higher. I do admit those platforms who are not producing much production, who are not making money to the operators are now um, shut down. And I do admit that well, refineries do reduce their output, but any plants, any platforms will still need modification. It will still need revamping work. It is still need maintenance. So don't lose hope. There are still jobs available because we are in oil and gas. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool, um, great. great. Yeah, great. so if I, yeah. if I can also share um, this morning, in um, the Edge CEO Morning Brief, um, I just managed to go through that today. CGS, CIMB, the stock brokerage company, has overweight these uh, sectors, which are banks, healthcare, gaming. I think your students will love to hear this. Gaming, yeah. <laughs> All and gas, yeah, gaming. Electronic manufacturing services, media, and rubber gloves because in COVID everybody needs lots of rubber gloves. So uh, CGS, CIMB, this um, stock brokerage company has overweight the stocks or the um, shares on the oil and gas. So that's why I said there's still hope. <laughs> there's still hope. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yes ah, wonderful, wonderful. Sorry, now this is how the problems, you know, when you do virtual, you know, somehow, I don't know, some finger <laughs> or my finger, I don't know, will press the mute and uh, therefore, you know, you can't hear me. So, so this is the, the weaknesses of the, 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 the online thingy like we are talking about. So, I agree with both of you when saying the hybrid style. But one thing for sure, that in this pandemic year, we learn to adapt. And, and adopt this new technology and it helps in the sense that you know we don't have to travel far but we still able to communicate we share we you know all these things but nothing beats to see face to face to gather meetings uh, to see a lecture or to interact with the students or to meet up meet up with your clients or your colleagues in discussion so uh, yeah, that's the best but like I say hybrids is the best way to go so yeah great so um uh, uh, Puan, Puan, I just want to ask you about the, 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 the current situations here. What's the cr most criteria talents that you may look into for your sector, I mean, for, for your company or as, as a whole, uh, 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 that you will give more priority uh, now or in the, few, in the near future, for example, you know? Tough. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the talents, the talents. You the know, talent if you want to hire new talents, for example, what kind of criteria you look into uh, in the future, you know? It got to be tough. Because oh, I know, mm -hmm. tough. I know, well, everyone who come to me asking for, uh, applying for, for a job, I know they have engineering degree. Everyone mm -hmm. who's applying. Well, they do have those um, hard skills that is required. Mm -hmm. They do have some soft skills as well, which I need to appreciate. But I've been looking for people who are tough and disciplined, which I think this is um, a bit of lacking in the strawberry generations nowadays. Uh, being in, in our field, oil and gas, it is a tough field. It's very common that you have to go through the plants very hard and you got, you got to really manage yourself, uh, wake up early, um, eat enough and things like that. But um, if, the, if the guys who are working with us, for example, are not disciplined enough when they travel, when they land um, to, to Jakarta, for example, the first thing they do is to go jalan-jalan and merayau. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then they, are, they don't have enough rest, they don't have enough time to prepare for breakfast and get their stomach full, for example. And then they need to get up early, hop in the car, enter the plants, and then telling me that, Oh, si sakit kepala sebab tak makan. Ah, <laughs> number one. And why tough is very important for, for being in, in, in this oil and gas, 
um, uh, you, you know, it, we, we can't accept silly excuses. Like, for example, you know you're flying for work. Uh, you got to bring your charger, you got to bring your phone charger, you got to make sure your um, your line, your phone line is 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 having roaming uh, services and things like that. So don't tell us uh, with nitty gritty excuses like, oh, saya tertinggal calculator. <laughs> because for us, I think we're using scientific calculator. We, we can't do work with a normal, <laughs> with a normal calculator. Right. So they got to be they got to be tough and they got to be disciplined. Mm-hmm. 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 But I, I'm sure, Puan, you are a very tough lady, lah, Puan. Uh, <laughs> to work in oil and gas, <laughs> like you say, you know, I mean, <laughs> even me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be that tough enough, you know. <laughs> it's not easy, I know. Okay, it's a joke. Okay, Prof, how, what, what, what about you? What's okay. the talent? Yeah. In, in fact, um, in fact, uh, David, if I can support uh, Puan Soleha's point, I, I, I agree with her. Going forward, it's not just oil and gas, but the whole lot of the industry, they will be looking for tough people because the competition as we go forward is going to be, it, it's going to get even tougher and tougher. It's not going to get easier and easier, right? We've seen economic cycle goes up and down. It has been, it has been doing so for, for the last, I don't know, 100 years, couple of hundred years or so, right? There's, a, there's always an up and down, right? Now it's the time it is down. Now, I would imagine uh, students are a bit worried or edgy at this point in time because they are holding, uh, uh, there, there's not many jobs out there, although they are holding good degrees. But when the economy pick up back, right, that is the time that they will have to be ready. Yeah, Because I would imagine when the economy start picking up back after post the pandemic, there will be a lot of advertisement looking for talents and you've got to really compete. Yeah, And, and, and when you compete, as Juan Soler said, you cannot just go and say, okay, I have a degree in mechanical or in electrical, I've got A in this subject. But, you know, the, the evaluation on you has been done on papers. So, that technical ability. What the industry is looking for, as I said earlier, and I think Puan Soleha has said just now, it's more of the, your soft, the soft part of you. How tough you are, how reliable you are, mm-hmm. do you have integrity? Right? Uh, how do you sort of manage and discipline yourself? What exposure you have? Can you communicate clearly? Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, these are the skills that the industry are looking at. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, universities are now moving towards giving stronger and stronger emphasis on building their students and, of course, ultimately their graduates to have better and better capability in this. That is, uh, that is from what the point, uh, my point of view, uh, David. I think this is where, where, where the students now have to be prepared for themselves. Yeah, yeah I guess. The economy is about to pick up. <laughs> correct, correct. It's, it's just out of time. Exactly. I totally agree with you, Prof. So, I guess the toughness is about mental toughness, right? I mean, it's mostly yes. it's, uh, it's all the mental, as it's not about muscle or whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> but the mental yeah. that what you want to do, what you want to get, and you focus to that, you know, to achieve the goal. I think that's the the, 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 the mental toughness, yeah, that we need to focus on that, yeah. So, I guess uh, those are listening, the students uh, who are, and, and others, you know, so toughness on the mental, yeah, not the not the muscle. <laughs> <laughs> not the muscle. Yes. Well, muscle is important. The health is important, but you know, mental yeah. is the one for you to go further and far. Yeah. All right. Great. Um, as a uh, as a uh, as employee, uh, I mean that the talent is there, the me- mental, but the values. Uh, you mentioned about soft skill, right? So, uh, what type of soft skill will give you? I mean, how what kind of soft skill uh, soft skill that you think is really uh, uh crucial? In, in, in the working environment, what kind of soft skill uh, would you think the best uh, or important? Thank you. Oh, sorry, you, you, you yeah. your <laughs> you, you. Okay. Uh, for me, the soft skill that is driven by a very good uh, EQ, emotional quotients, and OQ, organizational quotients. So you got to be able to, to have... Um, to have an understanding, how to be able to work in a team, how to be compassionate to each other, because the company handbook will not be telling you how to manage your overseas trip properly with your team. Mm -hmm. The company handbook will not tell you that. But we have cases that our our staff um, supposed to fly from Bangkok to Malaysia, 
uh, two staff from Bangkok and they have to fly on Sunday. So they're all not coming from office. So what happened is that one left and did not remind, did not check with the other and the other missed her flight. <laughs> so that kind of thing happens and we're like oh my god uh, just because in the company handbook they don't give the guide how to go about when you are traveling together in a team so you simply did not contact your 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 colleague make sure that she also wakes up <laughs> get ready and take the flight so so i think other than other soft skills like communication skills um team working and things like that um, it is important in an industry to have people who have good EQ, emotional quotient, OQ, organizational quotient, um, and of course, um, a good common sense in their yeah, well being. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. That's my opinion. Great, great. Prof, how about yourself? If, 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 I, if I may add just one more, which is the underlying part the integ integrity. I think the integrity is very important. I remember there was a, I used to hear this story, which uh, I think was, it came from one of the, uh, the, the uh, Warren, Warren Buffet, I think, if I'm not mistaken. He was saying that when, when you hire a person, the first thing you look at is the integrity, then the others. Because the, the person, if the person has the integrity, it will actually get the rest. But if it's the person does not have, yeah. to the game. Yeah. Uh, Prof, I read that book as well. So he says that integrity is the ticket to the game. That's right. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, so, so integrity. I that is something that that. that. Um, another thing that, if I may add a bit uh, on that, David, you see, <clears throat> as we go forward, um, the, the the degree that the engineering or engineering technology degrees that the student hold, right? It gives them uh, a certain capability yeah, in, in a certain area. But I think now more and more industry are looking at what sort of additional skills they have. And I think in line with the fourth industrial revolution, um, they are also looking at, you know, this, uh, this, this additional skills on you able to do data analytics, uh, you know, artificial intelligence to a certain extent. Yeah. Uh, 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 this, these are the, the, the things, the, the skills that may come handy as well. Because, um, in fact, if I can share with you a, a couple of projects that we at UTP do, uh, it's sort of aided by my deputy vice chancellor of research, and we work with Petronas and a number of companies, where they're now actually moving on towards, uh, you know, like when you do monitoring, at the moment you do a lot of uh, 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 monitoring using uh, manpower, right? Okay. So you do you do a manual monitoring, yeah, which can be costly and time consuming. But what they are looking now is the introduction or, or rather the application of this uh, uh, this uh, various devices, right? Uh, you you couple systems with uh, uh, monitors with uh, 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 detectors, you know, where you put you you put uh, detect detectors all over you ex. You take, uh, you sort of extract real data, and then you have a system which do an analysis on those data and give you a certain interpretation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, that, that that kind of of, of skills would, would also be handy, yeah, for the uh, for the students. Uh, and I think that is something that is more and more demanded by the industry. Right. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, okay. Um... Is one, one, are you around? Yep, yep. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm around. You, Just that uh, later, I will share something on my screen as well. Uh, all right, sure. You want to share something now or, or later? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You can share it now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Um, I Because when Prof mentioned just now about the, about the double talent, yeah, about the additional talent, so I remember, you know, before I forgot, I should also share this one, that yes, um, having additional talent is very, very important. Um, and having that double talent, meaning if you are a mechanical engineer, it's probably good if you are also able to contribute in a different way to the company. So if you're good in artificial intelligence from uh, animation, uh, or some some marketing things, for example. Even though you're a marketing, even though you're a mechanical engineer, you could team up with the with the project or the marketing department in order to help them 
how to do marketing better. And I I would like also to to share uh, my observation throughout these years that um, sometimes people expect the way of working, the perks, the luxury of working in a big MNCs, a big organization that usually has everything. But we have to bear in mind that 98% are SMEs, companies in Malaysia, where SMEs are 38.9% contributor to the Malaysian GDP. So what does this mean? This means that um, there are many of us who will lend ourselves to, to a company which is SMEs. So you have to be adaptable working in smes is different from working in patronus working in operators working in shells working in utp yeah. <laughs> it is different because we have limited uh, resources we are really driven by the by the uh, revenue you know so the revenue will come from the i mean you need revenue in order for you to create profits yeah mm -hmm. so in order for you to have revenue you got to have your product sold you got to have your services sold if you're a consultant you got to have your uh, service consultancy service uh, being used by by other clients and things like that mm -hmm. so it's all about sales so i would feel like if the if the engineer do have some kind of talent that could support the income capturing department it could be a tender department yeah it could be the the sales department if it's a product or equipment company then this double talent your degree and your business acumen for example would land you in a job would secure you in a job and would make the company keep you longer mm, that that's my opinion mm -hmm. yeah anyway i'm just I'm just like showing some of these pictures over here to give some motivations to the engineering students who are in this pocket talk today. Um, here is my picture uh, after my examination as a certified application specialist. Um, this one is in Cambridge, United Kingdom, and I purposely wear baju kurung um, because I want these people to see I'm Malaysian, nice. being the only one in Southeast Asia, you know. <laughs> yeah, <we laughs> so I want. Sure, I, yeah. <laughs> I want them to remember me, Soleha, from Malaysia, who's wearing baju kurung that day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a bit chill, yeah. It's a bit chill, so I I have to I have to wear boots, um, and of course I have to wear my leggings inside. But I still want to show off my baju kurung. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, you know, and then when I when I mention about toughness, yeah. So if you see people like this at airport gates. You know, for me, um, I have to work on the laptops because we do have simulation to run and no choice you got to run on your laptops because the, the dongle or the license of the software usually attached to that particular laptop. You can't even share other people's laptop. Mm -hmm. So sometimes um, while waiting for the flights, yeah, then there is a problem coming in. You can just like wait, ah, nanti lah, dah sampai, you nak tengok, you know? You have you have your service um, mantra that you got to catch. So whenever we have time, people like us, well, if you see like we are sitting comfortably <laughs> on the airport gate floor like this. <laughs> every every minute counts, yeah. I mean, and yeah. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> with my simulation, with my piping simulation, with my flip flow <laughs> analysis simulation. Understand. And then oh. this one kita buat a uh, program dengan UMT student. Yeah, tadi said the mention to the pro uh, EDS Asia is also the industry partner to UTP. Uh, tapi kebetulan UMT University Malaysia Terengganu also invited us, so we did have program in September last year. Uh, yang ni uh, dengan apa ni Pertamina. So nampak kan mata saya macam sepet kan? I tell you, I'm very tired that time, but you have no excuse. Yeah. 9.30 on the dot, 9.30 on the dot at client's office. <laughs> this is what I call tough, you know, mental toughness, you know. So, uh, mental toughness, you gotta do what you gotta yeah. Do. When you are there, you got to, you know, accomplish it, you got to finish the job, you just can't stop it halfway, you know. This is how it should and you should be, you know. Correct, correct. Of, yeah. Which for the, for the students, especially for girls, I would like to give you these tips. Even though we are in a tough industry, oil and gas, I learned from Indonesia girls engineer i learned from thailand um girls engineer they all wear makeup 
<laughs> we dress up prof so even though you enter uh. the plan in the morning very pretty uh. with lipstick blusher bedak uh. kan betul uh. so uh. tengah hari ni dia nak berpeluh nak cair makeup tu cair lah uh. tapi kita pun rasa happy sebab eh eh sampai pagi jumpa kawan-kawan masuk plan cantik dia first impression tu penting juga eh. hmm. yeah. betul dekat Indonesia dekat Thailand engineer perempuan dia dress up jadi saya jadi malu bila saya datang muka comot-comot, tak pakai bedak, tak pakai lipstick kan. So now dia jadi macam habits lah for me. <laughs> And then like yang ni, gambar ni macam makeup kan. Sebenarnya ni saya masuk plan dekat Shell Bukom, Singapura. Nak naik Shell Bukom tu kita kena naik ferry dengan saya pening kepala nak muntah bau punya anginnya. Tapi makeup jangan tinggal eh. Ah, itu tip saya. Tip saya untuk girls and engineer to survive. Oh, okay. This is for all the tips look for the ladies. Eh? Yeah. This part. Look good. Look good. Look yeah. good. Look good. Betul, betul. Wonderful. So, uh, David, kalau yeah. saya boleh tambah sikit lagi. Boleh, eh? boleh. Um, because I understand that inside this pocket talk, not only the students, the engineering students, but also some engineers who who might not have their good luck right now, who just maybe being laid off. Mm-hmm. Well, my advice is that please hang on. Mm-hmm. Please hang on in this oil and gas field. And like Prof did mention tadi kan, um, apa tu, once the time, the good time comes again, um, well, if you are ready, you'll be ready for that time. Yeah. So during this time, uh, please keep yourself in this field. Although you have to change a job scope. For example, if you were a process engineer in a consultant, but because no job, then the consultant have to, you know, um, say bye-bye to you. So maybe you try to find a job in a equipment manufacturer company, for example, being a support sales engineer uh, for a while during this tough time. Because, uh, because if you go out, for example, if you go out from this field, you end up working in a McDonald or you work, work you know, in a different field, yeah? yeah. Sayang, sayang yeah. the jam terbang tu, masa yeah. tu. Where else, if you could still be inside the oil and gas, once the market is good, uh, you you did not waste your one or two years um, in unrelated field. Yeah. Mm. I, And then for, yeah. for us also, kita sedar uh, being in a tough situation, sometimes if the engineer don't mind company revising their remuneration package, memang yang tu would be a, a reason that we will still keep the the guy mm-hmm. permanently. Yeah. Yeah. So this is some of the some of the tips that that I can share mm-hmm. for the engineers. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, uh, this 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 pandemic year is uh, uh, you know is is very unusual. But I believe you know uh, when there's a bad times, the times will pass and the sun will rise again the next you know, the next day. So uh, you know, always hang on there and and you know look forward for the better one. But talking mm-hmm. about that, talking about that, um, you know, I like the point you say is uh, is is true mm-hmm. as well. Basically, you know, you got to, uh, you try to rescue yourself uh, and 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 you know upgrade and get your get Uh, further knowledge in in the respective industry uh, field mm-hmm. that you have been there, you know, um, so you can actually move forward. So on these questions, uh, on these directions, I would like to ask Prof. Uh, Ibrahim basically that you know in UTP, you know, also potentially um, uh, is there any programs that you know can help the you know uh, working adults uh, who has lost a job or maybe students as well uh, moving into uh, uh, reskilling their their knowledge as well as uh, you know. Uh, Uh, studies uh, for perhaps you know post uh, graduate programs or anything else uh, on that directions and how to help them great great thank you david for asking me that question i was waiting for it actually <laughs> <laughs> i got it i, I knew it i knew it yeah. well anyway but okay um, for the start uh, for the students that we have now uh, we are we are in the process of trying to identify a couple of uh, provider that can help us uh, in sort of integrating some of this skill-based training into our curricula, uh, be it some courses or, you know, that we can, we can, uh, we can, we can share with our students to help build the, the so-called additional skills needed. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And also we, we are using our, st- our academic staff who have that, that skills to actually do that, that training. That is for, for our students who are currently on board. So that, 
giving them some value add. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> for the uh, for the for the uh, for the people out there uh, who happen to sort of lose job or, or for the graduates who have not managed to find a job yet, I think this is also a good time if they want to consider uh, sort of venture into either postgraduate studies. In other words, when you do postgraduate studies, we offer masters by top cost program in quite a number of uh, areas which will allow you to deepen up your, your knowledge. So that can be sort of, that can also be uh, uh, an, an, an asset to you. Yeah? Yeah. If you build that, that deeper knowledge and then you target for a certain industry mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. uh, where you can go and, and, and sort of offer uh, a good value proposition of yourself to the company. Yeah. Uh, and even for those who have lost their job and, uh, and, and, and they are thinking about going into, you know, um, sort so, of um, diversifying a bit in terms of their ability, we, we, we offer quite a number. It's not just a postgraduate studies, we also have a training, a training program which we offer. Right. In fact, recently we are working uh, with, um, with the ministry in trying to get uh, people who will go through this, uh, this, this training program uh, and by doing so, we will try to get them paired up with, with potential industry out there. Yeah. We will be able to hire them. So, there's the whole long list. And, and I think uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a good time for people to, to sort of uh, take, a, uh, take a bit of a back seat and then start thinking and analyze back. Uh, as I said, <clears throat> going forward, there will be a lot of uh, a lot of the so-called fourth industrial revolution in technology application coming on board. Mm -hmm. So I think people need need to retool themselves. You cannot just uh, rest idle and be happy with the, the, the current skill you have. You need to go right. IoT, uh, big data analytics. Uh, even if you need to understand a bit on psychology, do that yeah? because you never know when you work later. All these skills can come handy, mm -hmm. and it can really help you, right? Yeah. So we are we're offering a whole lot eh? Post, from postgraduate studies courses uh, and 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 also uh, training programs uh, that we that we are making available to the whole of the public. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, that is what we're doing. Yeah. Okay, that, uh, just touching the uh, on, on UTP side, basically as academicians, uh, I mean, as I understand, there is also a career path on that directions, right? I mean, from lecturer to associate professor and the full professor, something like that. I mean, can you just tell uh, our informed uh, uh, viewers and listeners out there, maybe uh, perhaps, is there uh, what kind of career path in academia? It could be any universities or uh, or, or related uh, higher learning <coughs> educations. Mm -hmm. Right. Generally, um, um, they need people who go into academics, uh, uh, you know, after you finish your, your degree, depends whether you, you, you would love to do a lot more action kind of things, you know, uh, and, and you love doing external kind of work and, and, and not much of actually doing deep research or study, then industry would be your that which will they'll be suited well with you. But you never know. In my case, at the point when I completed my degree from University of New South Wales, that, that, that was way back in 1998, when I came back, at that time, Malaysia was, well, in recession in a way. Right? I, I, it was very difficult to find to find jobs in the industry. But I guess, um, I don't know, it, it kind of fit probably, right? Because the moment I, I, I came back, there was an opening in the university, University Technology Malaysia. So I thought, well, maybe I'll, I'll join the university in the university uh, 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 as a lecturer. You know, maybe just to have a look at it and see. Uh, maybe I'll go to industry when the time comes, eh? mm -hmm. because I, 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 at that time I was really burning to go to industry. But I proved myself wrong, right? Because uh, I sort of fall in love with the with the academic work, you know. Um, you're doing noble work, teaching and, and sharing knowledge. And on top of that, uh, I did, I, I sort of discovered that inside me, there's a passion of actually wanting to know uh, a lot more deeper in terms of a certain area of knowledge that, I, that I'm interested in. And that actually led me to postgraduate studies, where I went to UMIS and do my postgraduate. Now, once you've done your postgraduate studies, you fall in love with research, you either join a research uh, sort of organization 
or you you back on track on university. Now talking about the uh, the, the the career path, uh, David. Normally when you join in university, uh, now most university would take all PhD because when they bring you on board as a lecturer, it's not just about teaching alone. You see what happened is in order for you to enrich your teaching you need to blend it with the research when you do research you push yourself to to the frontier of the knowledge and you bring it back and plot it into your research uh, into your teaching and that will help to make your your in your teaching a lot more interesting and a lot more contemporary otherwise you may be teaching uh, I don't know, theories that was introduced in the 50s or in the 60s, <laughs> which people will say, oh my God, I can't, I can't bear this. <laughs> now people have gone into a 90s. Uh, so that is the, the, the English. So when you go, when you join university, uh, now most universities will take you with a PhD degree. And as you go along, you build your, 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 your profile by, by doing research, publication yeah and as you go up you build your expertise through research and publication you would you know inadvertently you may be going as well into the area of consultancy right. yeah, where you start offering your expertise to the industry mm -hmm. yeah oh. now as you build this profile that's where you go from lecturer to senior lecturer to associate professor and and professor hopefully now normally for professor you are expected to uh, uh, to sort of uh, at least have some international, national or international recognition. Mm -hmm. right? That's why you see a lot of the professors, they would have fellow of this, right? Uh, fellow of, in my case, I have a fellow of Academy Science Malaysia and I'm also a fellow of uh, ITME. So this kind of thing, it's a recognition to your, uh, to, to your, to your uh, capability, yeah? right. uh, to your, to yourself. Yeah. So that is, uh, it, it's, uh, it's still, uh, uh, I would imagine it's still, why out there, there's a lot more uh, universities in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, if you look at a lot of the private universities now in Malaysia, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for PhD to actually come and, and, and join them. Right. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. That's Thank fun. you, Prof. I think uh, this is very informative. Okay, I think, uh, wow, I mean, they realize that you know, we have come almost to, to the end of an hour. I mean, time flies, isn't it? Huh? So uh, I would say, uh, is there any, any last words or advice uh, before we wrap it up, uh, Puan? Uh, okay, so I would like to remind myself as well as the young engineers, future engineers out there that you got to be able to adapt to the work expectation in the current situation, especially if you land your job in SMEs. You got you, you can't be demanding, you got to have um uh, uh, like I said, emotional quotient, organizational quotients of how to be a good team player in uh SMEs. Yeah. And then the survival tips that I would like to share is that if you can be part of the people who capture income to the company, um most likely your position will be saved. Okay. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Right. Uh prof. Right. Uh, well, sorry, huh? make yourself indispensable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got, you, but I, I must admit, you've got to find something that you have in order uh, to make sure that the, 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 the company will, will want to hold you. Otherwise, uh, they don't see any point. Yeah, I, I, I agree very. I, I agree very much with Pon So, uh, um, just to end up uh, this part uh, from from my part, uh, what I would say is. Uh, I just want to reiterate is that hang on there. Yeah. Yes, the time is is, is bad now. Uh, uh, the, the, well, to a certain extent, because of this COVID, we've got the whole lot of industries being impacted, and that actually kills the demand and goes into the production side, and that goes all the jobs. But right, God will, inshallah, as we move forward. The economy is bound to pick back as proven in the previous cycle. Even oil now is about 50, 50 over, okay? Puan Saleha? I think it's 50 over US yeah. per barrel. So yes, as, scary number. <laughs> yeah. But as the as the as the the, the uh, as this the as people are, are able to tackle this this pandemic and the um, the economy start to build up, right? 
I guess we could, I don't know, I got a feel or hunch that we could be in a very quick sort of opening in the sense. For example, if you, to, if you talk about uh, 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 tourism industry, now tourism industry, airline industry are being hit back. But the thing is, you know, people have been doing that means people have the capacity to actually do tourism, right? And, and, and you see, whenever in Malaysia, for example, whenever this, uh, this lockdown is being opened, People just simply go and, and, and you have some, something like a boom, like that, you know, in terms of... So, I don't know, I mean, it can happen to that extent. Yeah. And when this happens, the cycle of, of demand will start to come back, right? Yeah. When the demand come back, the production will start to go up and you will see industry will start looking for, for talents to bring on board. Correct. Yeah? But as I said earlier, hang on there, yeah. but while hang on there, don't sit quiet, don't sit tight and quiet. Try to find something that you can. This is a good time for you to venture into some uh, some knowledge, new knowledge build up to enrich uh, your your ability and capability. Uh, and uh, God will, this will help you to 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 give a better value proposition to the company that you want to join later. So my advice is, hang on there. Inshallah, things will get better. Wonderful. Yeah, I always believe after a, after a strong storm or a big storm, the the sun will come back up again. You know, so hang on tight. You know, uh, and and like like Prof said that you know don't just sit down there and you know get yourself, uh, equip yourself with more knowledge and skill or whatsoever. You know, understand more and and so prepare for, uh, the 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 boom up time and and when the boom up time, grab it. You know, whatever things that you feel you want to grab it. In the meantime. Yeah, I love it. You know, I, I some kind of realized that when Prof mentioned that UTP is offering complementary uh, training to the academic programs, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, earlier before we start, uh, I did I did tell Prof that EDS Asia is one of our industry partners to UTP, and sometimes ago we did do this kind of program to UTP. So I think Prof, I should put some budget to support you so that we could do those kind of trainings again to your final year students, especially chemical and mechanical students, so that that will be an additional value to their TVs. So we can Great. discuss about that afterwards, Great. yeah? Great, excellent. I would love to do that. Thank you, Ponsaleha. Appreciate it. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So yeah, great, great initiative, uh, Pua Soliha. Wonderful. So, all right. So great. So I hope that listeners and viewers uh, at home and anywhere around the world uh, are happy uh, with uh, today's talk. Um, and uh, don't forget, Ready 2021 is here uh, in a uh, virtual event will be held in January 11 and 12. Uh, is for you to you know explore and understand or, or get any potential uh, uh, job and others that can help you to equip yourself and get for a pot better position and uh, or potentially a work yeah if you are looking for a job uh, now yeah all right so once again thank you very much uh Puan Soliha Rosli and Professor TS Dr Muhammad Ibrahim Mutalib thank you so much for your time and uh for the rest uh, we sincerely hope you enjoy today's sessions and remember to register to get your free invites for the next session just go to www.myref.org.my or uh, voices.my so uh, to get full Voices Malaysia experience do download Voices Malaysia app on iOS or Play Store search for Voices MY till we see you in the next Pocket Talk remember to always sanitize your hand use mask whenever you you are out about and maintain your required social distancing So uh, stay safe, stay healthy and stay happy always thank you everybody, thank you To those of you who have come in search of answers, seeking inspiration and looking to achieve your aspiration, this is the place where you will learn to find the answers, where you will be motivated to discover your inspiration, where you will be propelled to realize your aspirations. With today's global challenges, 
the role of the engineer, the scientist, and the technologist is transformed from being the technical innovator into being the agent of global change. Our world-class resources and faculties, our cutting-edge facilities, our global partnerships with leading universities, our strong network with industry for internships and job placements. Our worldwide research collaboration. These are the inspirations and the opportunities at UTP. Here, we nurture the analytical skills and intellectual capabilities of all who walk the UTP path. Here we culture the ethics and the attitudes that will shine in the real world. Here we expose ourselves to what it truly means to be human, to be a valuable part of society to be the empowered people, the game changers, who will light up the path towards a better world and change lives for the better. At UTP, the torch is firmly in your hands. So hold it up high and let us together light it and let it burn brightly. Join us to seek inspiration and achieve your aspiration towards global prominence.